dreams often tell us about our current internal state, but they also show us the possibilities for where we're going. So who are you becoming according to your dreams? Your unconscious knows you better than you consciously know yourself. From dreams of rainbows to vortexes, black cats to empty beer cans, I'll show you how to make sense of the language of dreams. Hello, and welcome to The Stuff of Dreams. I'm your host, Amy Lawson, and my goal is to connect you with your dreams in a more fun and meaningful way so you can interpret the messages your unconscious is sending. This week's theme is dreams of transformation, and I have one interesting Reddit dream for you, and then a long interview with someone who is new to dream interpretation, but has a story to tell that I think you'll find really interesting and will help us get more deeply into her dream and hopefully allow you to learn from it as well. Because it's less affected by conscious influences, I think that the unconscious is able to be a little bit more optimistic than we consciously can sometimes, especially in these strange days. And I'm actually seeing a lot of dreams about transformation on Reddit and from other sources, even during this time of pandemic and civil unrest. I think that when the status quo is disrupted in any way, the unconscious can see a greater potential for change. And I think that's why we're seeing a lot of these dreams of transformation right now. Not to mention the fact that a lot of us have more free time on our hands than we usually do. And we can put that time into, you know, learning and doing things that we didn't have the time or the energy or the motivation to do before. So I find really frequently in my dreams that the images are about potential. They're about what could happen. They're about what direction I might be able to move in if I stay on this same path or if I correct my path in some way. I think that's one of the really important things that dreams can do. And I think it's one of the reasons that I feel so strongly about trying to teach other people about how to make some meaning out of their dreams. Because I think that the deeper inner self that lives at the core of our unconscious, at the core of our psyche, really does have our best interests at heart, as well as a lot of wisdom about us. And I think it's an untapped source of information and support for a lot of people. I also think that in these times of social pressure and pressure to conform and the abundance of social media right now, I mean, we're surrounded by it. You would have to work really hard to not be affected by what everybody else is doing. So in that current situation, I think it's more important than ever that we really reconnect to our internal source of wisdom and motivation so that we can work from a place that's meaningful to us instead of being directed by whatever external forces are being pressed upon us right now, whether it's by family or culture or social media or bosses or whatever. So enough of my editorializing comments for today. Let's get to the dreams. As usual, I use this dream with permission from the dreamer. And we're going to try something a little bit new today. You've all been listening for seven episodes so far, right? You're all new experts in dream interpretation. So at certain points before I offer my own interpretation, I'm going to give you the option of, hey, pause here and think about something. And then you can come up with what you think it might mean and you can compare or contrast it with what I think. And that doesn't mean that I'm always right. We've also talked about how there are many layers to dreams and many possible interpretations and you can't help but project your own stuff onto other people's dreams sometimes but that can be really useful for you psychologically and educational about what's going on for you too so now the dream hey i've never posted in this subreddit before but i'm really interested in understanding my dreams and i was wondering if anyone had ever experienced anything like i did last night my dream started with me being across the street from a field there were two bright, beautiful rainbows in the sky. I ran across the street to the field to get a better look. There was a single picnic table in the field, and I sat down with some other people I didn't know. Suddenly, the sky grew dark. The colors of the rainbow came apart and formed giant rings in the sky. It looked sort of like the Olympic rings, but not exactly and on a way bigger scale. The colorful rings encompassed the whole sky against a background of dark night sky and bright, beautiful stars. 
Then the rings started spinning and moving towards each other until they were one bright spinning circle. This circle began to form a vortex of spinning stars and colors that was coming closer and closer to me on the picnic bench. I soon felt I was completely enveloped in this star tunnel. It was beautiful, but also scary because it was so big and unusual. I eventually was spit out the other side of the tunnel in what looked like a football field. Weird, because I don't watch football. But I didn't have a physical body anymore, so I woke up. Has anyone experienced this before or know what it could mean? It was so vivid and felt like it was important. First of all, I'll say I think it's really important that this dreamer identified the dream as important because, you know, sometimes you wake up from dreams and you're like, eh, that was just, you know, little details, my mind playing a little bit. I mean, I think you can probably make a little something at least out of those smaller dreams, but sometimes you wake up and you just have a sense of the heaviness or the importance or the usefulness of the dream. So if you wake up with that emotion, even if rationally you can't quite figure out why, I urge you to pay attention. So to recap the main images in the dream, there are two rainbows in the sky. The dreamer goes into a field and sits down at a picnic table. She sees huge colorful rings in the sky that morph into a tunnel or a vortex that eventually envelops her and transports her to a football field minus her body. So let's take those images in order. The dream starts across the street from a field and there are two rainbows in the sky that she wants to go across the street to take a better look at. What do the rainbows make you think of? What kind of tone does that set for the dream for you? You can pause here if you want to think about it for a minute. At the most basic level, I think rainbows are symbols of positivity somehow, right? I mean, they're beautiful. They are meant to be a promise of something. It kind of depends upon your background, but if you have a Christian background, then the rainbow was meant to be a promise from God that he wasn't going to flood the earth again. In Irish lore or mythology, there was a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, so the rainbow was a promise of wealth and riches. But anyway, you look at it, I mean, I, I can't think of a time when a rainbow was mentioned in a story or something and it was meant to be a bad omen, something of doom, right? It's always something sunny and happy. Also, a rainbow can only happen when there's moisture in the air, usually after rain or during rain, and then the sun comes out. And so you have that juxtaposition of clouds or moisture or a little bit of rain, but then the sun as well. The sun is breaking through. The sun is lighting up that water vapor and causing all these colors. So already for me, the tone of this dream is set to be positive. It's set to be about promise or some kind of wealth or riches, metaphorically speaking, it seems like potential. So there's a picnic table in this field and she goes across the street and sits down at the table with some other people she didn't know. Who do you think those people are? All we know is that they're strangers, but they're also sitting in this field looking at rainbows. So they're probably not enemies for us. They're just people that she doesn't know. And often, from my perspective in dreams, I look at all the other characters in the dream, as you know, as parts of the dreamer's psyche. So to me, this image of her sitting down at a picnic table with strangers is an image of coming to the table, being willing to meet and communicate with parts of herself that she hasn't known before. But yet they all seem to be there for a common purpose. They're there with the rainbow. They're there sitting at a common table. So it seems like parts of her that are willing to work with her, willing to work together. It seems like a communal atmosphere around the table. Now the sky grows dark and oh, could that be foreboding? It's getting dark. Well, let's see what happens next. The colors of the rainbow separate and they form themselves into giant colorful rings in the sky that kind of look like the Olympic rings. So the sky is dark, but we can see all the colors of the rainbow in rings and then she says, the rings start spinning and moving towards each other until they're one bright spinning circle. Consider that imagery for a minute. I assume it's seven colorful rings because there are seven colors in the rainbow. So you have seven colorful rings that start spinning and then move together until they're all one bright spinning circle. Does that have any certain meaning for you? Pause if you want to think about it for a minute. So we have seven colors 
morphing into one color. She doesn't say that it's white, but she says it's a bright spinning circle. And, you know, all the colors of the rainbow started off as white light that then through the prism action magic of rainbow science somehow, that white light gets split into all the colors of the spectrum. So the fact that they're recombining now seems like a balance. It seems like there was initially a movement towards splitting that light, and now all the colors are recombining into one. So to me, this is a powerful, energetic, bright light way of expressing integration and connection and coming together, with all the separate components being combined into one bright spinning ring of light. And then that circle of light begins to form a vortex of spinning stars and colors that comes closer and closer until it envelops the dreamer and spits her out on the other side of its tunnel. So this is a, an image of movement, of transformation to me. That's why I put it in this episode. First, she's sitting with a group of people at a picnic table in a field, and all of a sudden she's been transported through this tunnel to a football field and she doesn't have a physical body anymore. So even at the basic level, that's transformation. But what else might this mean? Well, she mentions that the football field thing is weird because she doesn't watch football, doesn't seem to have a connection to that. So why would the vortex spit her out in a football field? To me, sports fields have the connotation of physical activity, right? It's all about bodies trying to move themselves and achieve and beat the other team and whatever. So that detail makes it even more striking that while the vortex has dumped her in a football field, it has also somehow removed her physical body. And so I wonder if that detail is there just to emphasize that fact that, oh, it's a football field. Am I supposed to play football? Oh, wait, I don't even have a body to play. So I think that it's just to emphasize that lack of the physical now. And what could that lack of the physical signify? To me, it just feels like, you know, what are we if we're not our physical bodies? We're our mind. We are our spirit. I believe in the mind-body connection and that our minds are inextricably linked from our physical bodies. But that may not be the path that this dream is talking about for the dreamer. It may be saying that she needs to separate from her physical body in some way, worrying about how it looks or how it functions or something, and focus on the more spiritual or psychological aspects for a time. That may be part of her transformation. So here's the response I got to that interpretation. It's so cool to hear your perspective. I'm a mental health counseling student, so I especially appreciate what you're saying is grounded in theory, and I'm just generally interested in the unconscious mind. And yes, I think you've hit the nail on the head. It felt very transformational and moving. I'm a trauma survivor and have been on a long journey of understanding how that has impacted me and my conditioned thoughts, behavior, and actions. After years of therapy and honest curiosity about myself, I feel like I'm beginning to become highly aware of the thought processes and patterns that have held me back. Becoming compassionate with myself has helped me release a lot of the burden of guilt, shame, and fear that I've been carrying around for years. I feel like this dream was a manifestation of all of that, no longer feeling defined by my old patterns and breaking free and making the decision to become my authentic self. It seemed almost like a message of transcendence. And I like that phrase she used, making the decision to become my authentic self, because remember the first part of the dream, she crosses the street and she voluntarily sits down at that picnic table with a group of strangers. I think that has the flavor of willingness, you know, willingness to have a conversation, willingness to experience whatever is going to happen next. Because she could have just stood apart from them somewhere else in the field, but she chose to take that seat at the table. And I also think after that response, it really makes sense why the rainbows and the multicolored rings were what formed the vortex, because she mentioned a lot of different strands in her life, patterns and behaviors and emotions, positive and negative ones. And it was all those that were initially separate, but then spun into rings and rolled themselves together that formed that tunnel that eventually could transport and transform her. So I think the process she was talking about in her response was really symbolized in this dream, taking all of those different parts of her past life and putting them together in a way that can move her forward. So to me, this dream was just 
the perfect image to really encapsulate what's going on in her life right now, as well as showing her attitude of willingness, even though it was scary when she first saw that tunnel. And the fact that she really would be a different person in a different location when she came out on the other side of that tunnel. ended up connecting over Reddit, and I hope that you'll find her story and her dream really interesting. So hello, welcome to the program. Hi, it's so great to be here. Do you want to talk a little bit about what made you come to the dream interpretation subreddit in the first place? Yeah, I had been on a date, well, a virtual date because quarantine with this random guy from Bumble, and we were kind of talking and he told me, about dream interpretation, and I had never heard of it before, but it seemed like a fun thing to talk about, and I was all game for that. And he basically told me two main things about dream interpretation that he had learned from someone else. Every aspect of the dream is important, or like every object, and then also every aspect of the dream represents a portion of yourself. So the second that I heard of that, I really wanted to have a dream so I could try and kind of, you know, just try something new. I figured maybe this would be like an interesting another angle to take in terms of trying to just, you know, become a better person. All right. So are you ready to share your dream with us? Yeah, absolutely. So it was a crisp, dark, cool evening and fall foliage was on the ground and it was sweater weather. It felt like it could have been September or probably October. It wasn't super clear which, but it was definitely fall. I was walking home from the yoga studio in my neighborhood and it was nighttime, but I could see and I had no sense of fear. It was just a standard evening suburban walk home. There was a mysterious black cat walking ahead of me outside and I remember wondering if it would get along with my cat Chobani. In real life, I have two indoor cats and Chobani is the brother and Sweet Pea is the sister. I noticed that Chobani is outside of my neighbor's front yard and at this point, I'm only a few houses away from home. Chobani and the black cat weren't fighting, but I remember they weren't necessarily getting along either. And this was the first time that they were meeting each other. And you know how it goes when new cats meet. They ran around ahead and briefly outside in the neighbor's yard, the way dogs do when they play. And I shooed Chobani towards my house as he doesn't belong outside. He listens and the black cat also wanders off and forward in a similar direction. Although I get the sense that the black cat is not being influenced by my shoeing and it just feels like going in that direction and seeing what Chobani is up to. I remember being surprised when I reached my house because I hadn't noticed that the black cat was going towards my house too and it was just waiting in front of my house seeming like it wanted to go in. I can't remember if I let the black cat inside my house or not. Once I'm inside my house, I realized that I left the window open and that the space heater was on the entire time when I had stepped out to walk to the yoga studio. I go to close the window and notice that there is a crumpled, rusty, empty beer can outside near the open window. I'm feeling annoyed that someone littered on my property and like immediately frustrated with myself for forgetting to close the window. I go to close the window and that's when I woke up. And I also remember feeling in the dream, sort of like thinking to myself, in addition to like the feeling of frustration at leaving the window open, like, how could I forget and leave this window open? Like, what if it's someone had come inside? It's not like I was afraid of someone breaking in or like invading the space or anything. And I knew instinctively in the dream that no one had entered. And I also knew that the beer can wasn't mine, but I just got a general sense of like the situation being annoying and aggravating and extra details about the dream. The structural layout mirrors my real home, but it's just flipped backwards and a little bit smaller. So the inside layout was sparse, drab, a little bit messy. There really isn't any color. And it's not like the dream was in black and white, but it was more so in like muted tones of like khaki, beige, navy, olive, gray, etc. There was a dimly lit standing lamp, a couch, a stuffed chair, an unlit fireplace, and a wooden stool that had my space heater sitting on top, which had been turned on and running. In my dream, I also know that my house is just this one living room. And while there is a hallway and it's dark, it's not scary or anything like that. It's just more so a sense of, oh, this living room is my house. I'm home. And there wasn't any consciousness given to the rest of my house because in this dream, it seemed like the only part of my house that existed was the living room. 
Okay, lots of good information in there. Yes, you had this dream, and what did you do next? So the next thing I did after I had this dream was I, first off, was stoked that I even had a dream because I hadn't had one in like two months. And then I just sort of wrote everything down frantically as quickly as I could. And then I just decided to go outside and sort of mull things over. And it wasn't until later in the day that I decided to take the time to look up the interpretation of it. Because in all honesty, like, I still was kind of skeptical and not really sure. And I didn't want to take the time to do it right away. So I definitely dragged my feet and procrastinated. And when I finally got around to it, I just Googled like dream interpretation dictionary. And I just clicked the first crappy link that popped up. So it, honestly, the website didn't even look legitimate at all. It was just very much like, you know, 90s AOL style. And I was like, well, this definitely isn't going to help me, but I might as well try, right? So I didn't go into this with the most open-mindedness that I probably could have. But at the same time, I was still, I figured it was worth trying. I had heard from the guy on Bumble that, you know, every object has an aspect to the dream, but like instinctively, I kind of felt like it was more than just every object. So for me, like I wanted to look up what it meant that it was fall. I wanted to look up what it meant that it was cold outside or like that it was the evening as opposed to just like, what does the window mean? What does a cat mean? So what I did was I just broke down all the individual elements and I just looked up all the components. So I looked up window, I looked up night or evening or fall, living room, house. And then, for example, I looked up the things that seemed like main components, like the heater and the black cat. And at that point, I felt like I had everything looked up in terms of um, all of those elements. And I was kind of on the fence as to whether I should even bother looking up the beer can or not, because in my mind, since I don't know anything about this, I was thinking, oh, it's trash. It's litter. It's literally like dream garbage that's on the ground. Like, why would I look that up? But I actually closed my book and I stepped away from the computer. And it wasn't until maybe an hour later that I figured, you know what? Like, I don't know what I'm doing. So let's just be extra safe and extra cautious and look up every single detail because I don't want to make a mistake. And what if it has meaning and I just don't know? So I looked up the beer can. I looked up rust. I looked up can. I looked up beer. I looked up empty. And then when I was writing down the definitions in my booklet, I <laughs> was kind of just stunned at what each individual component of like empty or rust or beer or can meant because each single component of that had meaning and seeing them all together they related in like a constellation that was just so um so shockingly accurate <laughs> i mean clearly not all of the di dictionary interpretation applied to me but i just knew that you have to underline the parts that resonate with you because it's an art, not a science. And I don't know why or how I knew that, but it just sort of, it seemed to make sense. And I'm also a very skeptical person. Like I'm not a huge fan of astrology. Like I like science. Like I feel like there's always bias and like variables and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, it's not that I'm opposed to things that I don't know or don't understand or that maybe seem like <coughs> pseudoscience, but you know, I wanted to make sure that I was taking a full approach to this. And I was stunned at what I discovered after looking up the definitions. And it was enough to kind of make me an instant convert to believing in dream interpretation. Woohoo! <laughs> I was shocked. Like, I almost fell off my chair. Yeah, when I took my first dream interpretation course, well, we really only had one dream work course in my school. And I mean, I was going in open minded and whatever, but I was just like, eh, maybe this will be interesting. I don't know. And they say I'm supposed to learn it. Yeah, I kind of had the same experience of, wait, I think these things really do make sense and they're important messages and whatever. So, yeah, I loved the account of your conversion experience. Yes, because then I think you saw my podcast post maybe on reddit or something and oh, you yeah. um and you messaged me and yeah. it was i i just was like smiling the whole time i read your post <laughs> so after i looked up the whole dream interpretation and wrote down all the different definitions my next thought was well i need to learn about this because it definitely like exists and it's a thing and it's real and why haven't i learned about this before so yeah, my first instinct after Googling and Google being kind of a disappointment was to just go to Reddit because why not? And I found this subreddit and someone had just posted, I think an hour before, 
a podcast episode about how there can be small aspects of dreams that have a big significance. And I was like, oh my God, the beer can, because it was literally litter. And I almost didn't even bother looking it up. And it was kind of one of the most important parts of my dream. And I immediately messaged the person that left that post without even having listened to the podcast. And I was just like, I need to tell you about this. And then later the next day, I binge listened to all of the episodes. Thank you for that. This is just kind of one of the synchronicity things. Actually, you're my first guest that I've had that I didn't know before the podcast. So you should feel very special. She knew nothing about me and her cold read stunned me. And I specifically gave her like zero information because I was like, all right. I'm going to test this out because, again, I hadn't listened to any of the podcast episodes. Had I listened to the podcast episodes, I probably wouldn't have been so um, testy or trying to rule out unknown variables. <laughs> yeah, because you sent me your dream and you sent me your interpretation and associations with it. But you said, you know, if you don't mind, like, will you give me an interpretation before you read all my stuff? Well, first I was like, challenge accepted. Absolutely. But I was like, <laughs> this is terrifying. What if all of your stuff like is completely opposite of what I say or something? So it's a lot to ask of a stranger uh, that you just, you know, read about on Reddit. But I really wanted to have her interpret my dream not knowing anything about me or any context of my life or what I'm going through just to see what whether there is any merit to dream interpretation which I myself already believe that there was based on interpreting it myself but why have any sort of influence or bias when you can eliminate that factor she interpreted it again after reading my own interpretation and to me it was incredible how I was shocked by my own interpretation, fell off my chair. And then comparing the cold read to your read with a little bit more context, like it it just, it stunned me. My husband was laughing at me because I was like, oh my gosh, this makes me nervous. And he's like, I thought you were supposed to be having fun with all of your dream stuff. And I was like, yeah, but this is like a test or something. But it was fun. It seemed like a challenge to me. Once I get super famous and hundreds of people are emailing me their <laughs> dreams, I won't have time to do these things. But no, I'm just kidding. I do think that I can be a little bit more combative, especially towards things that I am slightly skeptical of. But also, I, I recognize that it was a big, big ask of you. So thank you so much for agreeing to this. <laughs> no problem. It made for a, a good podcast episode because this is going to be fun. <laughs> Aren't you guys all really curious about the beer can now? We'll get to it, I promise. So when I was thinking about this dream, the main images were it's nighttime, you've been out to a yoga studio and you're coming back to your home and then you meet this black cat as well as your own pet cat has escaped from the house and you get back in the house and notice the space heater right next to the open window. So that's kind of the, the shorthand that I was making of the dream. And everybody knows that I love talking about dream geography first. So this is happening in a neighborhood and it's nighttime. So the night already made me think about this is closer to the unconscious somehow. And the fact that you'd been to a yoga studio, I thought was interesting because that really kind of set the tone of when I think about yoga, I think of like the mind body connection and communication and inner work and taking care of your mind and body together. And so sometimes in dreams, I think that the house represents the whole psyche. But in this dream, since you didn't start out in the house, I was thinking about, I think the whole neighborhood is your psyche. So the yoga studio represents some part of your psyche that you don't always live in. It's not your main house or your living room, but you had definitely been there in the dream and were coming back home. It's so cool hearing you interpret it and say it in your own words. And like a little bit of a thought process that you go through. It's really interesting. And then it's fall. So the air is kind of cool and crisp. And that is a really personal detail that because I didn't know your associations, I wasn't sure what to make of that. If this was my dream, it would be a positive thing because fall is like back to school. And that was always an exciting time of year for me because I'm a complete nerd and I wanted to go back <laughs> to school. And it meant the fall weather, you got to wear the new clothes that you had bought. But for some people, fall might be a more negative association. You know, it's summer's coming to an end. The leaves are starting to fall off the trees. Things are starting to die or go dormant. So I wasn't sure which way that was going to go. 
And then there were the cats. And so if people have listened to my other episodes, cats are amazing. I I love cats as symbols. There's a lot of different interpretations of cats depending on the context of the dream. But in general, cats represent the feminine or some feminine part of ourselves. They also often represent the body or somatic things because cats are very, you know, they're in their body. They stretch and purr and scratch and they're just very physical. And they also have the association with feminine wisdom too, you know, especially when it was the the black cat, I thought about, you know, black cats are associated with witches and witches kind of represent that ancient feminine wisdom that can either be positive, like healing and spells like that, or it could be negative, like hexes and curses. But the black cat was making me think about that kind of connection to a more mature, more powerful feminine wisdom. And I thought it was really interesting that the black cat was there to contrast your own pet domestic cat because they had very different energies, right? You know that your cat, Chobani, wasn't supposed to be outside. You wanted him back inside. Chobani seemed like more your personal feminine aspect that you're more familiar with, that it lives in your house, right? And the black cat is a little more wild. It's a stranger. It's coming back to your house, but clearly, you know, it's of its own accord, right? You're not like the owner of it. You're not um, shepherding it in some way. It has its own more wild energy. That's the feeling that I got. And then the other main image that I thought was really interesting was the heater next to the open window, because immediately that image struck me as wasted energy somehow. You know, the heater is providing this warmth But if it's put right next to an open window, that warmth isn't going to stay in your house. It's not going to stay in your main conscious ego. It's escaping. So it made me wonder what kind of dynamics are going on for you right now where maybe you feel like you're expending energy, but it's out the window. It's gone right away. You're not getting the, the good of it. You're not able to enjoy the warmth of it. And I also thought it was interesting that the heater was on this stool because that put it even closer to the window where the heat could escape. You know, usually the heater would be down on the floor. So that seemed a little bit arbitrary. The heater, when you sent me a diagram of the room and the heater was right by the fireplace, which you always refer to as the unlit fireplace. So that was interesting to me too, because a fireplace versus an electric heater have very different um, feels. You know, if if this was a warm wood fire in a fireplace that feels very cozy and natural and like you're using the natural world to generate heat, but the electric heater is just technology, right? It's just turning electricity into heat and it seems more man-made and less natural and also just has a lot less heat and power than a true fire would. So those are the kinds of things that these images were giving me. And then the beer can i had been primed by your stuff that you knew that the beer can was like super important so i was like what am i going to think about this beer can but i i wasn't quite sure i mean i knew that it was trash it was litter it wasn't inside your house it was outside the window and you were very clear that it wasn't yours but it was old and rusty and empty and so i was like but there's not any beer there so is this representing some kind of you know mind altering thing or i wasn't quite sure so i don't think i made too many great comments about that part you actually said in your cold reading and i was so impressed you said that with the beer can not only was there like litter but it was the connotation of alcohol partying like common people stuff and it was a beer can it wasn't like a wine bottle or like an expensive scotch bottle or something so there seemed to be sort of like the importance of keeping like the house or the yard tidy and like not having litter i do think there was something to be said when you mentioned that it was beer and as opposed to wine who would think of that not me so when i put this whole dream together to me it seemed like an image of you moving into more unfamiliar areas of your mind with going to the yoga studio and then you come home to your more controlled tidy safe conscious living room space but you've left a window open and not only did your pet cat get out but the heat that was being generated by the space heater was getting out too that seemed like a connection between conscious and unconscious because i'm seeing the house as like your conscious ego and the neighborhood as more more the unconscious parts so that seemed like you were trying to keep the two very separate but because the window was open things were escaping and coming in and out 
So then you've been out and encountered this other cat that's wilder, more witchy somehow. It wants to come in and you're just feeling annoyed that you've left this window open. So to me, the whole dream seemed to be about having conflicting feelings between wanting to go outside your usual conscious house, but not wanting things to escape from it either. You made it clear that you weren't scared of any of this stuff, but it seemed like it was annoying when you made mistakes or let the heat or the feminine energy or the cat out. So I think I just wrote that I was interested in where in your life right now some of those dynamics would be active. So then I sent it off and I crossed my fingers that you weren't going to be like, this is all bullshit. What are you talking about? That's not what it meant to me at all. Because honestly, usually when people send me their dreams, they have no idea, right? They, they're just like, I don't understand this. And they're going to kind of take whatever I say. So this was a bit more of a, of a challenge. So that was funny. I'm just making fun of myself. <laughs> I think it's so fascinating hearing her cold read because one of my takeaways was, oh gosh, like it's so energy inefficient because I was just, I was thinking of like literal energy and like an energy bill. I wasn't thinking about like a emotional energy. I don't even know the terminology. I guess it's emotional energy. Is that what you would call it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like more metaphoric, symbolic energy. I've said on my podcast before that I'm not a huge fan of dream dictionaries sometimes because I don't like how people try to use them as really exact and, you know, that things only have one meaning. So I reluctantly clicked on the link of the one that you had said you were going to use because just I was like, okay, I got to see this and look at it. And actually, it was one that offered many different ideas for each symbol. And so I actually thought that was good then because then you can kind of go through and pick which ones click for you. And so it seems like you have that intuitive ability to to recognize what clicks for you and what doesn't. And so uh, then once I read your, you know, your interpretations, I think that some people are more natural at being able to have that kind of soft focus of which of these interpretations might have more energy for me and make mean something to me. So yeah. I'm glad you think I'm natural. I'm definitely not. It's kind of what I was working on in therapy to be able to have intuition and trust it and hone it and just be aware of it because it has been completely severed from me. So that was my interpretation before I knew anything about you. So now I want you to tell us about the kinds of things that you found that really made sense from looking at the dream dictionary. And um, maybe we'll just have a conversation about putting the two all together and really figuring out what the stream means for you. When I first got Dr. Dr. Amy's cold read, I, again, like I said, I almost fell off my chair because first off, she got everything right with the exception of October. But even then she wasn't completely wrong with October. Like I do have very positive connotations with October because Halloween is my favorite holiday. But every aspect that she had interpreted was not really one that I myself had looked at, except it was still accurate. So for me, in some regards, it almost reminded me as like an art sculpture where no matter what angle you're standing at and looking at it, you have a different perspective, but they're still correct because you're still looking at the same object. I already was just blown away by what I had cobbled together with a crappy internet dictionary. So to even see how much more nuance there was, it made me a convert, I suppose, is what I'm looking for. I think the window was really interesting because like what I had looked up, it kind of can signify like bright hopes or like insight or overcoming distress or relief from difficulties. And then the three most important components were probably like the window and the heater aspect and then the black cat aspect and then like the rusty empty crushed beer can aspect. Mm -hmm. For me, when I looked up the rust, that meant that you're not utilizing your talents and your potential or maybe a little bit of like neglect or disappointment. And beer represents like happiness, relaxation, being free of worries. Empty means maybe something missing or lacking in your life, a sense of loss and can. I thought this was so interesting because I didn't know, but can can be a word play. The word can it could be that you can do something. So I thought that was interesting. And then in terms of the black cat, what I had looked up and found on that was it's experiencing fear in using your psychic abilities and like believing your intuition. So the heater meant that it was sort of like warmth or like comfort, and it could mean that you're opening up your feelings. And it also could mean a wish to use something or someone to make your life feel less terrible or alternatively like habits that you need to make and instill in order to make yourself more comfortable during an insensitive or emotionally cold situation. 
But what's interesting is that I had written down in my journal after I looked stuff up that there's probably some symbolism to letting the black cat enter my house. Like, gee, you think? And also that like <laughs> seeing animals in dreams points to maybe like primal instincts or needs or desires that could be repressed in your waking life. So... So you can all see that even just taking each of those images one by one, she was really able to feel which parts of her dream were giving more meaning than others. And, you know, the story is starting to shape up. So, OK, so it's night and you're returning from this yoga studio and you meet the black cat. You know what? I just thought of like black cat, October, Halloween. Like I never put those Whoa! together before. Sorry. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> no wonder it also had to be had to be a black cat. Yeah. You were talking about uh, reconnecting with intuition. And to me, the black cat and that witchy energy we've been talking about is all kind of the same, right? Witches weren't scientific. They weren't, you know, doing experiments and things. They were using their intuition and their spells and their abilities and whatever to help people or hurt people. So where are you seeing that black cat energy in your life right now? One of the things that I've been working on is trying to hone my intuition because it's not something that has ever really been a huge part of my life. Really, all I know is working in corporate America, and it's not the best fit for me. It's just something that I've done for financial reasons, filial piety, feeling like it's my role, my responsibility, like I have to. Because I think Asian culture has a lot to do with, oh, no, we don't follow our intuition. Like, we, you cannot major in art. you got to pick something practical. I will also actively ignore my intuition. Like, I've had gut feelings, <laughs> and I've just, like, repressed it. And, like, oh, boy, has that been disastrous for me. So the dream seems to be about that dichotomy or relationship between your pet cat and this more wild black cat and you're not quite sure if you ended up letting in the black cat or not into your house but maybe you're you're open to it so tell us more about where you think those things are going on in your life i think if the black cat were to represent your true instincts it would make a lot of sense in terms of my life because i have spent most of my 20s working a job and a career and something that is really not a good fit for my personality like at all but it's something where you know the way that i was raised coming from asian culture there's very much a um aspect where you do what is right and you don't necessarily do what you want to and it's very much about the collective and it's not so much about individualism and you are very practical and you know you get money and like you're a doctor or like a lawyer or like a business person and i am asian but i also suck at math because like asians being good at math is a stereotype and it's not always true so i ended up in sales which is funny because i'm an introvert and i don't necessarily know if I ever in a million years would have gone down that career path, but it was something that was suggested to me by a family member. And obviously, like, I am a good daughter and I listen to my parents. I liked enough elements of the job because it was intellectually fascinating to stick with it, but I always just felt like a salmon swimming upstream. And I also kind of felt like I was faking it because I'd have to work like twice as hard to be able to not feel energetically drained from talking to people all day. What you just said is the heater next to the open window then, right? Ah, you just said yeah. you have to work twice as hard with the energy. Wow. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely true. <laughs> And you're really explaining then already that presence of the beer can, but that it's outside the house, right? You're already talking about that you are kind of hemmed in by family expectations and you weren't able to have that, you know, party atmosphere. Tell us more about the beer can. Well, I think it's so interesting because first off, it didn't even occur to me to look that up until later in the day. Once I looked up what all the different aspects represented in terms of maybe like disappointment and fun and social aspects. A lot of it was about not utilizing your talents and your potential or uh, having there being something missing or lacking in your life. And I'm, you know, and if a beer can's empty, what's missing? Oh, it's the beer that's happiness or relaxation and being carefree. When you have aspects where you know that what you're doing is not something that aligns with your passions, but you feel in some ways almost forced into it, whether it's by yourself or for financial reasons or just because of cultural reasons. There's really never a way to be carefree because it's always in the back of your mind. Like, oh, like if I don't do this, like is the house going to get foreclosed? Or like if I were to pursue something that I actually cared about, like would it pay enough to be able to help support my parents' retirement? 
Yeah, and this dream image is really kind of kind of screaming at you in a way. I mean, not only is it the beer can is outside your window, but it's empty and it's crumpled and it's rusted. Like how many more details could there be saying oh. that there's yeah, that distance between you and and that ability of feeling more free. It's been sort of neat like figuring this out in real time and coming at it from an angle of not knowing anything. It is very common that once people decide they're going to have a dream or start paying attention to their dreams or start with a union analyst, that the first dream that they have is like a big dream and is something that really encapsulates either the situation of what's going on right now or actually Jung in some of his stuff would write often the first dream and analysand, that was his fancy word for patient, will bring to me, will predict the course of the whole treatment. and. Oh. I'm not your therapist, <laughs> but it seems like this dream is giving you a snapshot of how you're feeling right now, that the energy is escaping and that the black cat is outside the house, although moving toward the house, so that's probably good. And also suggests what forces you are supposed to be trying to integrate back into your house in the form of this cat energy, maybe. Yeah. And the beer can energy. And I think it's so positive, too. And I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but I, I forgot about it. But so I decided I, that enough was enough. I quit my job without telling my parents because I knew that they would not approve. So I did that. And then the pandemic happened. So I've had a lot of free time to think about stuff. It's been the most freeing moment that I've ever had in my life because I've never just been able to wake up and do whatever I wanted to do for months at a time. In some ways, it's almost like enrolling myself in like adult Montessori school, except I'm both the student and the teacher. And it's been phenomenal. And the amount of like serendipitous or like what was the word that you said like synchro synchro synchronistic yeah yeah like I just I, every day has had so much synchronistic stuff it's been phenomenal and I love it I love that adult Montessori school yes and in the dream I think that's you going to the yoga studio right this whole pandemic has been kind of like a trip to the yoga studio for you does that does that feel right yeah and oh my god at the very beginning when I quit my plan was I will give myself a month to figure out what I want to do and then I will maybe pursue it. And so I gave myself a month and I got overwhelmed. So I didn't actually try to figure out what I wanted to do. I just spent time doing what I enjoyed, which coincidentally ended up allowing me to sort of figure out what might be a good fit for me, even though I was not consciously thinking about it. And I also did yoga every day during that month. I think an integral part of it is me not knowing whether I let the black cat in the house or not. And I think that's because in real life, I have, but I also haven't. It's Schrodinger's cat, right? You don't know if the cat is alive or dead. You don't know if it's in your house or not. Oh but God. there's potential there still, right? He could be. She could be in your house. I didn't even think <laughs> of like the Schrodinger's cat connection to the black cat. And like, that's so genius. Really, I think I had a breakthrough from reading my shitty interpretation and then also the cold reading interpretation in the sense that if I were to stop wasting energy on things that I know intuitively are not a good fit for me or not a good path for me, then things will be a lot easier. And I also have to kind of let go of the fear because I didn't have any fear in the dream. I was just frustrated and annoyed, which is how I felt my entire life in corporate America. Yeah. And I mean, the emotional component of the dream is important. And the fact that that you're not feeling fear in it, I think, is the absence of fear seems like a positive sign that 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 you're not afraid about making these changes. Yeah. What you said during the second interpretation was totally different than what you said versus the first one, but also 100 percent correct, which I thought was so fascinating. And also just everything that you said was not things that I had interpreted which was so interesting mm. to me. Yeah, so then we put our interpretations together and it was really interesting to see how that changed or amplified my own because, again, I usually don't get this stepwise kind of thing. People are just like, what does this mean? And then I give them some ideas. After I read some more about you and your family situation, it really made sense to me why in the dream you've left those muted colors in your living room house to go outside at night to the yoga studio representing that mind-body connection because it seems like there's been a lot of pressure on you, you know, both your parents pressuring you and self-inflicted pressure. So much. I know about that for sure. 
And so just the fact that you stepped outside that living room house and followed that path towards something that you more want to do is really fascinating to me. And as far as the beer can being outside the window, I mean, after hearing your story, of course, the beer can had to be outside the window, right? It's connotations of partying and letting loose and having fun definitely don't belong in your little living room house of responsibility for your parents. But I did like the fact that it's just outside the window, right? It's not like it's three blocks away down the street. It's close. It's really close to your house. It's accessible. It's within reach. Yeah, exactly. So it's in your neighborhood. I was also wondering too, like, what does crumpled mean? Because I couldn't like see that in the dictionary. Crushed, crumpled, like, is there any connotation with that or? To me, it's just, it's an even bigger sign of disrespect and disuse. Mm. It's not even like a whole intact can. It's crumpled. It doesn't even take up as much room anymore. It's, you know, not even useful anymore for holding anything because it's crumpled now. Like, to me, it's yeah. just another layer of the empty and the rusted and the crumpled. Yeah. Right. I think it was also interesting that the two cats were of opposite sexes, right? So the black cat is a female cat, which makes sense with this feminine energy. But why do you think the dream chose to use your male cat instead of your female cat? So I was confused by that at first. My cats are brother and sister and their personalities are polar opposites. And Sweet Pea is the female, but she's also the more intelligent one. And she's the more like adventurous and the more inquisitive one. Whereas Chobani, he does not like going outside. He would definitely rather like sit in and like sit on my lap. And I think that the fact that he would never ever venture outside um, speaks to that. And also it sounds like if the dream had chosen Sweet Pea, it wouldn't have been nearly as big a deal for the cat to be outside in the first place. So it was kind of one of those details that makes you think a little bit more about it because it's so far away from what would happen in real life. Yeah. While I was editing this episode, I thought of something else that I just have to add in here. I hadn't thought much about the fact that in her dream, the house was made up of just a living room and maybe a dark hallway at the back, but there weren't any other rooms in the house. And I think that detail in itself also has meaning, especially after getting into the dream and hearing the rest of the parts of the interpretation the fact that there's only a living room makes a lot of sense. In a normal house, there would be a bedroom, which is a place for rest and relaxation, a place for connection with other people. But the dream house lacks that. In a normal house, there would be a bathroom, a place that often symbolizes bodily functions and excretion of unwanted byproducts and, you know, getting rid of your crap, metaphorically speaking. There's no place in her house for that either. The main living space in the house is the living room, which to me has the flavor of a little bit of a more public place in the house, right? If you have company, they're going to come and meet you in the living room. It's a little bit more of a public facing space in your house. So I think that living room only imagery just underscores what we've been talking about with her living her life more according to other people's expectations and pressures on her rather than according to her own interests and needs and desires. And I think maybe we need to do a short episode on the meanings of different rooms in the house, don't you think? I'll get to work on that. That's the show for this week. I've actually collected a lot more transformation dreams than we could cover today, so we'll definitely do another transformation episode in the future. In the next episode, I'm going to stop putting it off and we're finally going to tackle some dreams about the mother. I also have sets of dreams for episodes on anima figures, which are female guides in dreams, on sex, on peeing and pooping in dreams, on transportation imagery in dreams, shadow figures, and violence or bodily trauma in dreams as well as a lot of other random dreams. So if you want to hear about any of those other topics sooner rather than later, just email me at stuffofdreamspodcast at gmail.com and I'll see what I can do to move it up in the queue. Head on over to my website at stuffofdreams.fireside.fm to find show notes for each episode where I summarize the dream interpretation principles we discuss each week. You can also find links there to major podcast apps and my YouTube channel, my favorite dream interpretation and depth psychology books, our subreddit, and my email for sending me your dreams. Thank you so much for listening. And if you liked it, I encourage you to tell a friend about it this week. Let's get more people fluent in the language of dreams. Bye for now. And I hope you dream tonight.